This video is directed towards if you have a charge off on your account and maybe you've already sent an uh, investigation letter, you've already sent a reinvestigation letter. So now it's time to do what you call a factual dispute. So that's what we're going to talk about here tonight. If you've missed my how to remove charge off or how to dispute charge off video, go ahead and pick it up right there or click down below as well and go ahead and get the how to dispute charge off guide. It has videos to go step by step on how to remove charge offs as well. So you can even do it while you're at work. It's very interactive, has all of the clickable links in there, all of the step by step videos. So if you need some help with it, go ahead and grab that uh, how to dispute charge off guide. It has everything that I'm going to be saying and going over tonight over it. But tonight we're going to be be concentrating on inaccuracies and violations or how to find inaccuracies on your actual credit report with the naked eye. Because I guarantee you, I'm pretty much 99% sure that you probably got an inaccuracy on your actual credit report, but you just don't know it and you don't know how to get that charge off off of your report, okay? Or even a collection for that matter. But this is directed towards charge off tonight. If you do not have what you call a 1099C, if you have a 1099C already, we treat those a little bit different. But again, if you do not have a 1099C, let's jump right on into the video, okay? So again, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here tonight. Without further ado, there we go. And we're going to have a little Q&A here at the end. And just give me a, a thumbs up if you can see my uh, screen where it says inaccuracies for me or violations. Just give me a thumbs up in the chat. Thank you. And we good to go. All right, so inaccuracies and violations cited for deletions. What I'm gonna go here tonight is I'm gonna go line by line of some of the inaccuracies. Then what we're gonna do is look at the actual, some examples of the actual credit report so you can take a peek at them. And I may end up doing a part two to this video so we can get a few more credit reports as well. So let's go ahead and look at one of the first violations that you can look at. One of the very first ones is when you call repeat charge-offs. And I'm going to show you this on the actual credit report. This is where an account inaccurately reports monthly charge-offs, which potentially what it does is re-ages your account over and over again. And this is um, as a debt, and that's completely illegal. We went over in the, uh, how to dispute charge-offs. We went over what 15 USC 8, 1681 EB is, and that's what this is all about. And remember, y'all, when we talk about something that's inaccurate, inaccurate and complete, your credit report has to be accurate and complete. It can be 100 thing, 99 things correct, but one thing is incorrect. That is an inaccuracy or incomplete. OK, so when you talk about repeat charge offs, that's when you say when they're re-aging your account as an example of what that is. For an example, if you're seeing a uh, charge off constantly on your account and what's happening is that charge off happened in 2022, but they're re-aging it every single month. And now it's 2024. Ordinarily, it would be on your credit seven years right from the date of first delinquency, okay? So what happens is if they're re-aging it, your seven years starts over every single month. That is illegal, folks. Folks. So some of the things that I'm going to show you tonight here, what you would be doing is taking whatever the inaccuracy is and imputing it into the factual dispute letter, okay, which I'll show here at the end as well. So that'll be your um, factual dispute and again, let me just hit reverse real quick. The way you want to find these is you must go to annualcreditreport.com or get your actual credit report from Equifax, from Experian, from TransUnion. Yes, it's going to be a little harder to read. Yes, but you're trying to set this up and you want to look at this as if you're, look, you're taking these people to court. Because sometimes if you're looking at uh, my FICO or Credit Karma, and they're only looking at a two-year history, what we're looking at is the big picture. Because again, if you have 99 correct, but only 100, uh, one that's incorrect, that is an inaccuracy or incomplete that can come off of your actual credit report. So remember that. This is the reason that we're looking at annual credit 
report.com or actually getting your report from the actual credit bureaus themselves, directly from Experian, directly from Equifax, directly from TransUnion, okay? And I'll talk about that here later, okay? So the next one here is omission of transfer or sale of information. What is that? That's when account has been charged off or sold. They must put that in the actual comments. Again, if you don't see in the comments uh, that they've sold or transferred that, that, that is a misrepresentation of, 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 um, of status. So what happens is it's been charged off for your account, but because it's been charged off, they must say that it's been transferred or sold to XYZ, quote unquote, collection company or debt buyer. OK, that is a violation of 15 U.S.C. 1681 S2. That's another reason for it to get what? Re deleted off of your actual account. OK, let's look at number three. And again, I am going to show these in the actual um some of these will be actually on examples in the credit report, but I want to go over these first. Incorrect balance reporting, okay? The reported balance remains inaccurate post-transfer or sale of the payment, again, which is, again, a misleading, misleading or, a, or a violation of 15 U.S.C. 1681 S2. Incorrect balance reporting. What that simply means is the original balance from the original creditor once they transfer that, now the collection agency or the debt buyer is now incorrectly reporting that balance. Okay. This is this is what the reason you want to fine tooth your actual credit report. You'll only find this information on your actual credit reports of the ones that I just gave examples of. Okay. So again, your incorrect balances, once they transfer that, it has to show the balance, and that balance has to be consistent for what it transferred from the actual creditor, the original creditor, over to the debt collect collector or the debt buyer, okay? Number four, inconsistent balance reporting across, across credit bureaus. So what that simply means is the variance in reporting balances across different credit bureaus must be all compliant, y'all, or if not, it is non-compliant, okay? So what that simply means is that balance no matter if it's on the original creditor or if it's on the actual debt collection company or the debt buyer, it must be consistent across all three credit bureaus. Or what? That is an inaccuracy or incomplete. So what that simply means, if it's correct on TransUnion and Equifax, then you want to get with Experian where it's I'm, I'm sorry, if it's correct on Equifax and TransUnion, TransUnion but it's incorrect on experience, Experian, then it can be removed off of Experian and you want to use that where somebody, somebody's got to be incorrect, okay? Unlawful change of delinquency date. You see this a lot. The reported date of first delinquency has been improperly altered, contradicting again, 15 U.S.C. 1681. When the first, so you're gonna, I'm going to show you later where some reports won't even show a first delinquency date. OK, or the first delinquency date has been changed. What is the first delinquency? What that simply means is that is the first time when you were actually delinquent on that before it came current again. Let me explain what that means is if in January you were 30 days late, February you were 60 days late and then March you were 90 days late. But in April you brought it current. OK, but then in May. You were delinquent again 30 days and then 60 days and then 90 days and then 120 days and then it went into ultimately a charge off. Your first delinquency is not all the way back in January. Your first delinquent is the last time you were first delinquent without bringing it current. So using that example, it would have been in May. And I'm going to show you some of this in examples here later, but I wanted to explain it first. Okay. So again, that is what you call an unlawful change of first delinquency date. When they've changed that date or that date is incorrect from when it went first delinquent. Okay. And on your actual credit report, there is a payment history. And then there's a little portion that has a chart there. A lot of times we're used to just looking at that chart. But in actuality, when you pull your actual credit report, it has to match with your payment history your history or your historical data, sometimes it'll say that, 
versus what that chart says, which I'm going to show you shortly. Misreported activity payment history post. 180 days. So if that if that account has been charged off after 180 days, you can't come back and say, oh, that account is okay after 180 days, and then it goes back to collections, okay? So what that's saying is that's misreported activity of payment. Once you're charged off, it can't go back to an okay status, okay? Or a different or a late status. So once it's charged off, it should be charged off and then it should say no data. Anything after that is a misreported act of payment history, such as, okay, now you're late 30 days or now all of a sudden you're okay because you made that payment. That is misreported because it's been charged off, okay? My apologies, folks. I forgot to turn off my ringer there. All right, so that's what that is. The next one is incorrect account number or account on accounts that's simple that doesn't mean when your account has the account number then the xxx that ultimately is self-explanatory this occurs when an account number listed on your credit report doesn't match the actual account number which again can lead to incorrect reporting potential issues a lot of times this will happen and sometimes what will happen is if you've had two or three accounts with one particular creditor they can sometimes mix up the account, those account numbers, okay? So you want to take very close attention to that. Incorrect or inconsistent balances, okay? If a balance on your account is reported incorrectly, again, it can affect your credit, but it can also affect your utilization and your overall credit score. So even if it's a charge-off, it's still affecting your actual utilization. So that balance, no matter how far it's off, it must be correct. And a lot of times what happens is it's being charged off or it's being sold. They'll still be reporting that balance when that balance should be zero if they've sold or transferred that account. That is incorrect or inconsistent balance. Give me a thumbs up if that's making sense to you, okay, in the chat. Incorrect or inconsistent opening dates. Come on, y'all. This is where we get them right here. Whenever you have an opening or inconsistent opening date, you're going to see the date that it was actually open. Sometimes you have two different opening dates on one credit report. Something's got to be incorrect. And I'm going to show you here in a moment. What that simply means is when you have an open date, if you open that account in January of 2022, it should not say December of 2021 on one portion of the credit report, then on another portion it has January, okay? Those days have to be concurrent, okay? They have to be the same. Inconsistent, or again, I'm just showing you here what you wanna actually look for by the naked eye. So you can just look at your credit report and you like, you like, I got them. Incorrect or inconsistent credit limit, okay? Credit limits impact your credit utilization ratio as well. So reporting a lower or higher credit limit uh, which than what, uh, than what you can actually have can inflate or deflate your credit score and be very inaccurate. So what that simply means, a lot of times when you have a charge off, just look and think about this. If you have a charge off, what should your credit limit be? What should it be? It should be zero dollars because it's charged off. You have no limit of credit. Many times they'll still be listing what your credit limit was when, when in actuality your credit limit should now be zero, okay? So you shouldn't have a credit limit, okay? Uh, or even your credit limit can be up or down depending on what your balance is. So you want to do your checks and balances with that. Being reported as an account owner instead of an authorized user. That's that's really big. If you've been listed as an authorized user on an account, you definitely don't want to be listed as the owner of that account. You should be listed as an authorized user. And in, in fact, if you're an authorized user, you should be removed from that negative account because it's hurting your credit as well. But you should definitely not be listed as the owner. Accounts incorrectly reporting as late or delinquent. This happens when an account is falsely reported as later delinquent, even though payments were made on time, 
uh, this can definitely be se severely impact your credit score. Now, let me explain something. Many times when you look at your credit report, it will be inconsistent when, when the late payment was. So the late payment many times can go 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, then you make a payment. But what, it, what you can have is all of a sudden is $0, is zero payments late, and then all of a sudden it's 60 days late. How do you, you got to be 30 days late before you can be 60 days late. So it has to be in succession that way. Now, in some cases, you can go 30, 60, 60 months because you made a payment, which I'm going to show you here later. I hope that makes sense. And you can always rewind this video as well and go back and take a peek. Incorrect date of last activity. OK, the date of last activity. This is humongous here. This is what you see generally a lot. OK, date of last activity is used to determine the age of the actual account. So an incorrect an incorrect date of last activity can either unfairly or prolong the reporting. OK, because it's reported incorrectly. So date of last activity, 99 percent of the time, that is the last time you actually paid that on that account. So if you had that account two years ago. And you made a payment in January of 20, uh, of two Jan uh January of 2022, and now it's 2024, your date of, of last activity should not be currently 2024. That's what you call, again, they're reaging your account, and that's now giving you a longer period of time for it to be actually on your actual account, okay? So we want to make sure we correct that, okay? Incorrect date of first delinquency. So the first date of first delinquency is critical for calculating the seven-year reporting period, which I just explained that, okay? Debt listed more than once, possibly using two different company names. I'll explain what double jeopardy is in just a second. So again, duplicate, li duplicate listings of the same debt can unfairly impact your debt to your income and credit worthiness. This occurs, uh, this occurs when a debt is sold to a collection agency, but the original account is not been removed. So we call this in the credit world double jeopardy, especially when both companies are now your original collector, over, your original creditor over here, but then your debt company over here, they both show a balance. Both of them can't show a balance. You can't have one charged off here, a collection here, and they're both trying to get money from you. That's now double jeopardy and they're being double listed, okay? That can't happen, according to 15 U.S.C. 1681 E.B. as well. So a reinsertion, reinsertion of an incorrect information after it was previously corrected, once, cor once incorrect information is corrected on your report, it should not be reappearing. So it's meaning once this comes off of your credit report, it shouldn't be reappearing all of a sudden in six months under the same information. If it does, it may be a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, okay? As credit bureaus are required to ensure that all correct information and what else complete is not reinserted without proper verification. So if they didn't go through the proper verification process, they can't reinsert it, okay? All right, let's go through a few more of these and then I'm going to give you some examples. The collection accounts, the collection accounts reporting a past due balance, not to be confused with balance owed. Okay. Let's just make this make sense. Make this make sense. How can I have a past due amount if it's charged off? I, I may have a balance owed, but I can't have a past due amount. Past due is when it's still a current account. And it's past due. So the um, um, a collection account may incorrectly show a past due balance even after the debt is settled. This error it can negatively affect your credit and your future uh, borrowing. So you got to be very careful that it doesn't show a past due amount or a balance still even when it's been paid off. Okay, but it should be showing a collection amount, not a past due. Collection accounts not reporting their to not collection accounts not reporting their original creditor. Okay, the collection account should always report their original creditor. Creditor. So what you should have is failing to do this can also create very confusion. So what you should have over here is X Y Z company, and then over here you should say this was the original correct creditor was X, and then the collection company is. 
YZ. Okay, you should show that. So it should show Verizon over here is the original, using that as an example, but Portfolio Recovery is the actual collection company. They got to have that. It can't just be unknown and no data. Accounts incorrectly reporting as late or delinquent. Okay, this is a duplicate entry, whereas if it's reporting late or delinquent, this is a duplicate entry of points. Going back to this, what I stated before, it's an emphasis of importance on accurately reporting of the account status, partially regarding to late payments. So account incorrectly reporting or um, as a late or delinquent payment is just what it is. It has to be accurate. So if it's not late and it has to be late on that particular month, which I'm going to show you that here in just a second. Inconsistent payment history across uh, data uh, credit uh, bureaus is the exact same thing. Your payment history, it's got to show the same thing. So if you were 30 days late in January and it says you were February on, on Equifax, but then on Experian, it shows February you were late, but not in January and vice versa. That's inconsistent payment history. It's got to show the same payment history, whether it's positive or negative history, it's got to show the exact same payment history across the credit bureaus, okay? So this is one of the, the ways that we get this off, okay? Because it's very rare that they show it consistently across all three credit bureaus. <clears throat> A few more here. Charge-off accounts sold or transferred to another company but not reported with a zero balance, okay? I went over that before. Again, whenever the original creditor transfers or sells it, now your balance must show zero. This is a lot of times what gets them in trouble because what happens is we're they're still showing it as a balance on the account when it actually should be zero on your actual account, okay? So you gotta be very careful to look that up and, 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 and uh Take a peek at that and check your balances, okay? Open charge accounts. I'm going through a few of these and then I'm going to slow down here. Open charge accounts. Open uh, charge off accounts, okay? A charge off account should be what? Close once the creditor writes off the debt, okay? If it remains open, it could continue to negatively affect your credit score. So once it's a charge off, it's got to be closed. Charge off, closed, not charge off, open. Why? Because once it's charge off and close, you should see charge off and then you should see no data. Charge off, charge off, charge off, charge off. That's where it is. they're incorrectly reporting this because once it's charged off and written off, it should then show no data. Collection accounts with credit limits, okay? If it's a collection account, typically should not have a credit limit listed, as I showed, said before. If one is present, it can distort your credit utilization. Again, if it's a collection account and it still shows a credit limit of X amount, it's going to mess up your utilization as well. It should show a balance. Yes, if it's with a collection company, but it should not be showing a credit limit. Your credit limit should be $0 because it's a closed or charged off account. You don't have a credit limit means that's how much money you can go get from them. Obviously, it's charged off. You shouldn't be able to do that. Closed accounts reporting uh, as open. OK, I just said that a closed account reopen as an open and falsely affects your available credit and overall uh, profile. So that, again, can be very misleading. And last, last three here, incorrect account statuses, such as an account reflected as a settled in full, but instead of paid in full. So what that simply means is if you have an incorrect status, you see this a lot of times, they can actually change your status. So meaning if it's a collection, but they got it listed as a charge off, and they change it to collection, you can see an increase in your actual score. If it goes from a charge off to a charge off that's paid, you can see a chart something reflected in your score. So it should be reflecting that on your actual credit report. So if it's a paid charge off, is a paid charge off is better than an unpaid one. Okay. So the status of your account is very important to lenders. Okay. 
incorrectly um, reporting the account as settled in full rather than paid in full. Okay, so you want to have it that way. Can give you an impression that it did not fully meet the obligation. So it should say paid in full, not settled. Okay, number 26, last few, outdated accounts. Again, if you see something on your account and it's over such as late payments and collective negatively hitting your, hitting your credit report, it should only be on your credit report for seven years, okay? If that if it exceeds that, it's, it can also be removed from your actual credit report as well. And lastly, accounts that have been illegally re-aged. So re-aging occurs, again, I said this before, when a creditor or collection agency illegally changes the date of first delinquency, that's very important, to extend the time of negativity. You see this a lot on your actual credit report, okay? Because why? This is how they get paid. They get paid to keep this stuff. They make billions of dollars off of reporting this history. So of course they will change your first date of delinquency, okay? So let's just go over here, a couple of credit reports, okay? What I want to do here first is I want to show you a couple of things on the credit report. First, from looking at uh, a, a credit report such as identity IQ, my 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 free I score, my, my score, some of the credit monitoring, let me say that, uh, versus when you get them from the actual annual credit report.com or Equifax or Experian or um, TransUnion. OK, so one of the things I want to show you here is. We're going to look at the balance, for example. This here is a charge off account. Remember, I said if the, it says charge off is bad debt transfer to recovery. So what's wrong with this actual account? What's wrong with it? First of all, that's the first thing I said. One of the first thing I said is if they've transferred it to a collection agency, guess what? The balance should show what? Zero dollars. Because why? The collection company is now going to show that they owe a balance. That's a reason for this to be removed from your actual credit report. What's something else that's wrong with this? Let's look at the notes across the board. So if it says on TransUnion that this charge off is a bad debt transfer to recovery, it should say that on all three. Let's look at Experian. It says transfer to recovery, unpaid balance reported. But what does it say for Equifax? Charge off account unsecured. It doesn't show that they actually sold it. So that right there, we've already found three, two things right there to have this removed from your account. Just these two things, just by the naked eye. What's another thing here? Let's look down in the actual two-year payment history. Again, we only have two years here. One of the reasons I want you to get that, that uh, payment, that credit history from annualcreditreport.com because it's going to show all of your data. So the more data we have, guess what? The more opportunity they have to make a mistake, okay? So here, we have it as okay, 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 okay. And then all of a sudden, it goes 30 days late in September. Well, first of all, what do we show... TransUnion is reporting this, but I don't see any payment history. I see no data for the payment history, even though it was good payment history with TransUnion. I show no data whatsoever. Where's the data? All of a sudden, you, you said that you had data because it shows me the last reported date was 8-1-2016. It shows me data. I'm looking at TransUnion. I'm sorry. I'm looking at... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm looking at TransUnion has no data here. TransUnion has no data, but here it's told, it gives me all the data here. So why aren't they showing me any data here? Okay, so here I'm going to show, experience shows 30 days late, Equifax 30, okay, 60 days, 60 days. Now look here, November 15, it shows 90 days late. That sounds about right, but what does it say? It was charged off here and 90 days late here. That's another error. Right here, it says, okay, for Equifax. Once you have a charge off, you can't go back to having what? Give me some thumbs up in the chat if that makes sense. If you got a charge off, you can't. We just read that. 
You can't go back to having an okay status. So look here, let's look at Experian. It says charge off here. Then it says no data, no data, no data, which is correct. But then all of a sudden, August 16, August 16, it shows what? Charge off again. This is so many errors just by looking at the naked eye of this. This is, uh, we looked at several, several uh, inaccuracies here. Let's go to the next one. So let's take a peek at what we see here wrong. Charge off is bad debt, cancel by a guarantor. All right, let's see here. Charge off, that's right. Okay, that's right. Let's see here. Date of last payment, 1031, 1030, 15, 1030, 15, 10, 1, 15. Somebody wrong. Somebody's wrong. Okay. Date last active, 319, 61, 10-1. Somebody's wrong. Inaccuracies, okay? So now that this is a charge off, again, this is showing a high credit, high credit of $6,297. What's the high credit here? The high credit is not your credit limit. The high credit simply means what was the highest amount that you had on that? on that card at that particular time. As you can see, Equifax shows $5,540, $6,297 here, and zero here. Inaccurate, inaccurate, inaccurate. Credit limit, 5540, that might be correct. Might be correct. Credit limit, zero dollars. That is actually, because again, they shouldn't be showing, that's not high credit. This is after it's been charged off. What should it sh show? Zero as the credit limit. So ding, 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 echo fax is correct. Wrong, wrong, okay? All right, so right here is a uh, date, past due amount, okay? Past due amount. Well, if they haven't transferred this, it can still show that if it hasn't been transferred and they don't show that they've transferred it. So again, this shows collection, collection. This one shows, okay, 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 okay. No data. Inaccuracies here. Somebody's wrong. It's been charged off, but Equifax shows it okay. Which is good in your case, but if you're trying to get this removed, the data is not mass, uh, matching up and not is not consistent across all three credit bureaus. But let's take a peek here. Just by the naked eye. Somebody in the chat. Just look at the account status and tell me what's wrong with this actual account. Tell me if you know what's wrong with this account. Just by the naked eye. What's wrong with this account? Can you see what's wrong with this account? First of all, we're not this we're not looking at all the data here yet. We're simply looking at a little bit of data. The data we're going to look at here is just going to uh, this is what you call a full credit report, okay? So it's going to be a lot of other information, but we want to take it frame by frame and see what's wrong. The first thing I see, account status, 120 days had over 120 days past due. So it's not 120 days, but it's not 180 days. So let's see. Huh, go figure. Here it was 30, 60, 90. Doesn't show 120. 30, 60, 30, 30, no data. So what's wrong here? It doesn't show that it was 120 days late here. Inaccurate. Here is the first date it looks like of delinquency. Well, let's see, was it 30 days late, 60 days late, 30 days late? That could be the case in, in case they, they could have made a payment here. We're gonna look at that. Then it was 30 days again. Then you have no data here. Then all of a sudden it was 30, 60, 90. So this could have been an okay status, but it has to show paid on time, paid on time. We could go back and say, why didn't you have data here? So right there, we have 120 days past due, 
I don't see 120 days anywhere here. So that's inaccurate, okay? The fact that we have no reporting date here and no reporting date here, this is only one credit report as well. So you won't see a, uh, the consistency between all three. This is just one credit report from one particular um, credit bureau, okay? So let's look at the next one. Let's take a peek here. This is the same, same client here where it says 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 30, 30, no data here. So let's look to see, oops, sorry. Let's look to see what's wrong here. Credit limit, okay. Oh, wow, I can't quite see what's under the date of last payment. I, I think that's, that's an A, and by, by my recollection, this is date of last payment was April, okay? You can't see it right up there, it, date closed here. Date of last payment, I believe, we know that's an A. If I'm not mistaken, it was April, okay? Uh, or I wanna say April, but I won't speculate. Okay, so let's see what's wrong here. Date open, December 31st, 15. Date last reported, April 2017. What did it report? Date last reported, what did it report in April 17? Absolutely nothing according to here. Inaccurate, okay? So it didn't report anything. Actual payment that was done, $398. I can't quite see there. I apologize here. I can't see that payment there because my logo is in the way. But that's an inaccuracy. We know we got one there. Let's look at the next page. Date of first date, delinquency first reported. What in the world? What in the world? They don't even have a date for date of first reported delinquency. Remember, when, when should the first delinquency be? The first delinquency is the first date after it never goes current again. So 30, 60, 30, 30, no data. So we're going to take that as a payment. So the date of first delinquency should be January 2017 because it was 30, 60, 90. Then we have nothing else. And we know it was closed in April of 2017. So the date of first delinquency should be January 30th. But what do they have there? Absolutely nothing right here. Zero. Okay. Let me move that up. So they got nothing there. Inaccurate. Okay, let's look at this. Months review, 16. Huh, doesn't look like 16 months to me. Where's the rest of the months? First reported is zero. I'm sorry, let's, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Date of first delinquency, they do have it as January 17, my, my error. Uh, it wasn't reported. Delinquency first reported. My apologies. It wasn't reported. It should still be a date there. Okay. Still should be a date. Date closed, April 27th. April 2017. What do we have there? Doesn't show anything there. Let's keep going. Let's take a peek here. This is another uh, account here. Reported balance, zero. Pays as agreed. Okay. Pays as agreed. You don't see anything here. Nothing there. We see a 30-day late here. Nothing there. 30 days late. So let's look down a little bit more and get a little bit more data on this account. The high credit limit is 4000 $4,305. Credit limit, zero. That's good. The balance, zero. Let's keep going. Amount past due, nothing. Good. Date of last activity, November 2016. 
November 2016 for the date of last activity. See, October it was late. November 2016, no data. So where's the data? Where's the data if date of last activity was 2016? Date open, March 2016. So it was... I'm sorry. Date open March 21st, 2016. Date reported April 2017. April 2017, no data. You see how that's not lining up with what's on your actual credit report? Oops. Let's go back here. Let's go back. Well, I'm sorry. All right. So you see how that's not lining up? Uh oh, I, I didn't miss my, sorry. There we go. All right, April 17th. Let's go to the next one. Available credit, that's good. Reported balance is should be zero. That is correct. Let's take a peek here. I think we looked at these already. We looked at these two. Okay. Uh oh. Let me go back. Where was I? Hold on, guys. Okay, here we go. So you have. We, we talked, we got that slide. So let's go to the next one. There we go. So here's a new one. So let's look here. Let's see what, what we got here. We got a collection account. Looks like it's a medical account, which is irrelevant. Even though it's $100, shouldn't even be on your credit report now, under $600. So let's see if we see anything right off. Date of first delinquency. We already know it was a collection account, right? So date of first delinquency, there is no date. We got to have what the first date of delinquency is. Got to have that. Date of last payment date, nothing there. Now, it could have been that they never paid anything. That could be correct. But date of first delinquency, you got nothing there. You ain't got nothing there. So ain't nothing to go. you got to have something there. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's take a peek here and see what we see. I'm going to go down. Let's see here first, and we're going to look at the second section. I'm just pulling out a few inaccuracies here as we look at just random credit reports. Status paid closed. Okay, so it's a paid account that's it's been closed. Date open, January 2019. The balance is zero. Balance updated and no data. Recent payment, recent payment. It had to be a payment here. Let's look here. Original balance, $525. Look here. Look at this. What was the highest balance? Zero. That can't be right. If the original balance was $525, the highest balance is $24. Some of this stuff is common sense. When you actually look at your credit report, that can't possibly be right. You can't have a highest balance at zero, but your original balance is $525. Tell me if that, give me a thumbs up if that's making any sense, y'all. That makes no sense if your highest balance is zero. Again, the name of this game is inaccuracies and complete. Okay, so that 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 right there is incorrect. Okay, all right, let's keep going. So let's look. This was open in January 2019. Status updated May 22. So let's look at the actual data here. May 29. Open May 9, 2019. May 2019. Date open, January, I'm sorry, January 2019. I'm about to say, that's not right. 
So we open it up here. Check, check. Good, good, good. Okay, good, 20. So now we got it 30 days late in October, 60 days late in November, 60 days late in December. And then, so right there, that tells me 60, 60, there had to probably be a payment date, payment made here, or it goes 60, or it goes 30, 60, 90 here. Had to be a payment made. However, watch this. January 2021, no data. But then it goes 60 days late in February. So what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What that simply means is you can't go from no data to 60 days late. It must be 30 days late before it can be 60 days late. You can't go from zero to 60. That may have happened, but it's up to them to report it here in January that it was 30 days late at this point or however many days it was late because it went 30, 60, 60, no data, 60. So that's incorrect. Okay. So let's look down here. 30 days past due as of October, 2020. Let's see. October, 2020, 30 days late. That's correct. 60 days past due as of November, 2020 to January, 2021. So let's look at that. November 2020. November 2020 is 60 days late, correct? 60 days late in December. Mm. January, no data. So that means that's inaccurate because it says from November 2020 to January 21, that is inaccurate. Because why? It says from November 2020 to January 21. Okay? That's inaccurate. Okay, so what I wanted to do here is just open it up. If you got any questions, I know I went through that relatively fast. If you got any questions on anything, just feel free to come off your come off mute, ask me any questions. But what I wanted to show you here was is tons and tons and tons of inaccuracies. Okay, uh, that I just showed you here uh, is plenty of inaccuracies. What you want to do here again, this is going on your factual dispute letter so when you get your go ahead get your uh guide when you get to letter three in a factual dispute you're going to take one of those disputes that i've listed okay one to 27 you're going to input that inside of that factual dispute letter okay you're going to circle your credit report okay so what you're going to have in that credit report you're going to send the letter you're going to have your credit report you're going to circle you're not going to do this until letter three because remember, letter one and letter two, you're not going to tell them what's wrong. But in letter three, after they've done an investigation, was number one. A reinvestigation was number two. Now you're under a factual dispute. Now you want to tell them, look, I told you once, I told you twice, and you guys did not get this corrected. I'm now going to take my credit report, and I'm going to give them one Maybe two inaccuracies. Not, don't give them more than two inaccuracies on that first, on that third letter of factual dispute, because you may have to come back the fourth time. You see where I, I was trying to show you. I promise you, you have tons of inaccuracies actually on your credit report. But what happens is, if we don't understand or know what to look for, we won't know that it's it actually an inaccuracy on your credit report. OK, so you want to take that letter, you want to send it off via certified mail or you want to go to one of my previous videos there and do a consumer, uh, do a CFPB complaint through the CFPB. And you want to if you do it by mail, you want to do it with your driver's license. You want to also send your proof of um, residence, such as your utility bill, such as your voter's registration card as well as proof of residence. And you want to send a copy of your marked up credit report showing them what the inaccuracies were. And what you want to do is take one of those one through 27 where it fits you. And you want to insert that directly into the letter. Matter of fact, what I'll do is show you the letter here. I'll show you that letter. 
once again. Oops. I'm sorry, guys. If I can find the letter now. Oh, let's see. Well, you'll see the letter. It's in letter. It's it's right in the it's right in the guide. It's right in the in how to dispute charge off, guys. So, any questions for me tonight? Any questions? So, pretty much, if you're doing the dispute through the CFPB, all you need is you don't need the driver's license. Just basically your um, credit report. We still want to input that credit report. Yes. Okay. And then a uh, copy of the utility bill? Or no? Don't have to worry yeah, about you, that. You can, you can go ahead and send that just for peak's sake if you want to just valid your point off a little bit more. But yeah, you can go ahead and in input that into your documents if you like. It, would you do that? Or th you don't have to. When it's with okay, the CFPB, cool. cool. you don't have to. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But right. if you just as a a backup to the, just so they don't have anything to say, you mm -hmm. can definitely do that because what what happens is when you create your account uh, with the CFPB, you you you're with the CFPB versus you just sending a random letter per se. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Was that pretty? Did, did you did you get some nuggets out of that? 